Howdy ho, America, and points beyond to the extremities of the cosmos. Here we are again with another high tower, low down, happy hour. We welcome you uh, to it, uh, and we're going to get down tonight, and we hope you will get down with us uh, as we visit with a key leader. Uh, in the transformative victories uh, that we have enjoyed as progressives uh, in the great state uh, of Georgia. Uh, not always so great, but recently very, very great uh, with victories in the presidential race and then also the two Senate seats that we've, uh, that the uh, Democrats have won over there. And the question is, uh, how? How did they do it? And how might we uh, do it ourselves wherever uh, we are? So grab a libation. Uh, and get with us. I've got mine. Uh, this is a local Texas beer, a hot mess inside a dumpster fire, inside a train wreck. Believe it or not, that's the name of a beer brewed here in Austin, Texas, and it is uh, surprisingly tasty, despite <laughs> despite the title. So join the conversation. Uh, we've got Deanna Zamp, uh, as usual, uh, awaiting you, our impresario of the internet, uh, awaiting your comments uh, and questions that you might have uh, for uh, for our guest uh, tonight uh, to join with us. Deanna, what, what's in your glass tonight? What do we have in there? Oh, I believe that's wine. I believe that's a white wine. Yes, So unlike is. you to have a white wine. I know. Wine. It's so unlikely with my bougie Chardonnay. It's so unlikely. De De Deanna and I were once in... Uh, in Kentucky, uh, no, Tennessee, East Tennessee, and uh, we were at a restaurant, and Deanna ordered a Chardonnay, and the waitress said, do you want the red or the white? <laughs> so you never know what, what you're going to get and where you are, but it's always interesting with Deanna's aunt. So join our conversation, uh, whether you're tuning in uh, with uh, our uh, Facebook uh, crowd and the High Tower Lowdown uh, group, or you're tuning in through Free Speech TV, uh, which is reaching 40 million homesteads uh, this very evening, uh, from Bellingham to Boca Raton, uh, from Bangor to Bisbee, Arizona. Uh, we want you to be a part of the conversation, and we're going to start off uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Inse Ufot, who has been with us uh, before on this show, she is the uh, director, uh, the CEO even, of a group called New Georgia Product, a Project, uh, and that is the outfit that has been doing for more than a decade now the grassroots, deep grassroots, uh, intensive organizing that is producing these remarkable transformative changes uh, in the politics uh, of that state. But Tonight, rather than just start off with the statistics uh, and the issues, uh, I want to I want to kind of get personal because uh, not not d detail personal <laughs> uh, naughtiness or anything like that, but but to to explore uh, how, how what does it take to do stuff like this, like INSEE uh, has done, and and so many others uh, in this country. Uh, I've been in politics, uh, much to the amusement of the people of Texas, uh, even getting elected a couple of times here. Uh, but uh, but I, I can tell you that uh, politics is not a natural act. <laughs> it, it, it takes a, a kind of aggressiveness and thrusting yourself out there in a way that, uh, that, that, that sometimes uh, is not easy. But also, once you get started in it, uh, it becomes natural. It's not hard because it is essentially just uh, talking uh, to people. Uh, so let's explore the, the personal side of politics. Uh, so I want to start with Insay. First of all, Insay, thank you so much for joining us. And what is your drink? I see you've got a libation there. I do. So thanks to the good folks around the corner at Monday Night Brewery, uh, Monday Night Brewing here in Atlanta, I'm drinking what is known as Blind Pirate. Uh, which is Blood Orange IPA, um, which right. is a very grown-up beer uh, yes, right. for me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so, like, no artificial coloring? No artificial coloring? Yeah. Like, right. no watermelon? No. Okay. Yeah, okay. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. But I wanted, to come, I wanted to show up properly for you today, High Tower. Very fine. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, we, we, we want to talk with you just, just a little bit, of, uh, again, on, on, on the personal side of, of, of your own motivations uh, and, and experience. Uh, in other words, how did Inse Ufat become Inse Ufat, a change maker uh, in Georgia? What got you started in this? 
Um, so I was born in Nigeria and immigrated to Atlanta with my family um, in the 80s. Um, listen, I'm a public school kid uh, who you know, went to a public college um, and who you know, became a US citizen and swore an oath of allegiance to the country, to the constitution uh, and to its people. Um, I, you know, when I became a citizen, I, I, I swore to defend the country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Um, and I hate and like despise hypocrisy. And so when I think about the gap between the rhetoric of, uh, of American democracy and the promise of America uh, and the reality. Um, I feel like I wanted to use my time uh, and my sort of skills um, to help close that gap. Um, I, you know, I don't think that you'll find a bigger patriot than me. I love this country. I love what it purports to be. And I get very angry when I see uh, elected officials and so-called leaders uh, fall short uh, or get in the way of the promise of America and American democracy. And so, yeah. I, I, I love it so much that I, I, I think it's important to criticize it when I see us falling short. Um, so, and, and, and so that I think is, that has been the sort of low grade hum, uh, in the background <laughs> of my life, like, you know, renouncing, um, uh, my citizenship in, in my, the country of my birth and like becoming a full throated, proud American. Uh, and I happen to believe that, you know, I am the we, uh, and we, the people that, in the government of, for, and by the people, I am the people. Um, yes. So, and as, yeah. as our friends at uh, at People's Action National Organization, a uh, grassroots group uh, based in Chicago, but all over the country, as they put it, uh, we have to build a bigger we. Uh, and you do that by putting whatever skills you have right. uh, to work. Uh, and and you scooted off to law school of all places. Uh, you you could have become a, a, a real sob. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, listen, with, I showed up as a real sob. Yeah, right. I just left with a law degree. <laughs> there you go. Right. And, <laughs> and but but you also don't just uh, just do the legal work uh, as as essential as that is to to know and understand and to contribute. Uh, but also you 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 use art. Use the culture uh, to reach people, and I th that's something that I, I think I, I don't think the Democratic Party has a, a a teaching session on how to do culture in right. politics. When in fact, culture is the best way to reach people, is it not? A thousand percent. So we have a we in our organization. Um, my colleague Nicole and 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 other people who I work closely with will tell you uh, we have a saying that culture eats strategy for lunch every day. <laughs> Every day. And so while we work to be very strategic and like our PowerPoints, our decks, our analysis, our, you know, all of that, our plans, our briefings, um, uh, demonstrate our, our commitment to being strategic and acting like being strategic actors, that it is ultimately that we are trying to change the culture of elections. Uh, we're trying to change the culture of policy making, um, and we are trying to continue to build a bigger we by bringing more people into the process. Um, and how? What better way to change culture than to work with culture workers? Um, mm -hmm. Listen, uh, you know, uh, decades later, you know, America the Beautiful, uh, you know, like makes people tear up. Um, you know, which side are you on? Um, it's like saying at all of our, you know, labor actions, um, you know, thinking about, um, you know, let my people go or other kind of like Negro spirituals that come up in our like, protests and demonstrations. Like these things change, like we need to change people's heads, but we also need to change people's hearts. Um, and that is, I think, some of the most challenging, uh, but also some of the most exciting work. Listen, Rosie the Riveter, like the people don't even know what it means. Like Gen Z has no idea. That's not true. Right. I mean, I'm fairly Gen Z. I'm fairly yeah. Gen Z. But 
images that are seared into our brains that become a part of our culture that tell a story, songs and music and movies, uh, all of those things are enduring right. and they are lasting. Um, you know, they talk about, um, you know, Will and Grace was this sitcom that was on network television and the impact that it had on the fight for marriage equality, right? Just normalizing it and showing, right. you right. know, Real life. Folks being regular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like fighting with their families and all of that. So, well, even I, I saw a piece uh, today. I think the New York Times or somewhere of uh, of uh, Reverend Warnock, uh, the new uh, African American uh, senator uh, from Georgia that y'all just uh, just yeah. elected, uh, who was uh, who was humanized, if, if I can uh, can expand that word a little bit, uh, by simply having a dog in his ads, showing that. <laughs> I, here, I love this dog. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, well, you, it's hard to learned, attack you if you're holding a puppy in your hand. You know? <laughs> well, listen, no, it didn't stop. It's part of the message. Trying. <laughs> it did yeah, not stop right. him from trying. But right. yeah, he has a beagle. Um, apparently, there's a history to that as well. That like people have fond memories of beagles and all of that. So yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dog. It, dog yeah. politics. Dog politics. I Dog think that's politics. important. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, Deanna's got some folks who are calling in and commenting and uh, talk to us, Deanna. We have folks from everywhere, as always, which I really, really love. We've got Columbus, Nebraska. We've got Kempner. We've got Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, mm. We've got, uh, I know, like this whole central, just right down the middle. Yeah, right the, down the middle. That's the our prairie people. is alive. The prairie <laughs> is alive tonight. Um, <laughs> we actually do have one question um, uh, from Joseph Guadano um, asking, and I think y'all are going to get to this, but he wants to know if y'all are in the fight to end the 60 vote supermajority in the Senate. The filibuster. Yes. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, You're going to do that, aren't you? Isn't that a next step for the Georgia Voter Project? I mean, I would argue that there are a few things that are more essential to um, getting a working, working family's agenda passed uh, over the next, let's be honest, 18 months. Uh, and Mitch McConnell and, over Mitch McConnell. <laughs> right, over Mitch McConnell, 100%. I don't, um, then getting rid of the filibuster, right? The idea, like we are looking for a simple majority in order to pass uh, yeah. these things. Because here's the thing, when Joe Biden and, well, sorry, when President Biden and Vice President <laughs> Harris uh, came to stump for Reverend Warnock and for John Ossoff and, you know, barnstorming through South Georgia and Savannah and other places. They didn't say, uh, vote for Warnock, vote for Ossoff. Uh, we still won't get anything done because we need 60 vote majority. They said, if you give us a 50 uh, vote majority, 50 plus one with Vice President Harris being a tiebreaker, we're gonna fight for Georgia families. We're gonna fight for American families. Right. And so whatever needs to happen in order to demonstrate that that is a reflection of the will of the people, I think needs to happen in any role that New Georgia Project can play to push that forward um, is one that we're willing to play. Like, I think it is that essential. Um, if we can't get the John Lewis Voting Rights like Restoration Act passed, uh, then uh, we are in a world of hurt. We're in a world of trouble, and the 2022 midterms are going to be bloody. Uh, and that's and that's not going to happen uh, by by turning to the lobbyists uh, and and the the movers and shakers uh, inside Washington D.C. We have to take this uh, to the countryside, and yeah. as you indicate. Uh, people themselves would say, well, yeah, I mean, the majority is supposed to rule. You know, we're supposed to have a majority decision uh, here. And, and, and I, I, I want to go into uh, some of the, 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 the political work that, that you do, because it's not, it's not just running ads, uh, very little of that. And, and it's not uh, having confabs and conferences and, and, and this sort of BS uh, that passes for politics uh, in our country. It's going right to the people uh, themselves. We have a little, little, little musical interlude that, that I'd like to offer here, uh, along with some of uh, what the work that you people are doing right there in Georgia. Okay. Around here. Got 
to change around him. Can't go on this way. Things got to change around here. Say it loud. Say it clear. Things going to change around here. There it is. That's, that's the kind of grassroots. I mean, you know, politics is again, is, is not, is, uh, as Insay puts it, is not strategy. Uh, it is culture, and that means getting out there with the people themselves, where they are, uh, in, in, a, in a cultural kind of way. So t- talk to me a little bit, of, Insay, about, because uh, uh, you all have got a, a front porch uh, political strategy where you, you, you don't, just survey people with little mailer opinion pieces or, or even phone opinion pieces, but you go on their front porch and you have lengthy conversations uh, with them. Uh, how, how has that changed your perception of, uh, of what politics is and, and the possibilities of politics? Um, what I've learned uh, based off of, you know, our approach to organizing is one that, um, that people are desperate, are eager for a fighter, um, someone who will fight for them, fight with them. Um, also, too, uh, used to think, like voter apathy, not a real thing. Right. Not right. a real right. thing. I think that, that um, it is competing obligations because people are tired, because they're working two jobs and doing, um, you know, ride share or food delivery, um, because they are, you know, actively involved in educating their children because we're in the middle of a pandemic because we haven't had the leadership uh, on the federal or the state or local level in a lot of places um, that people will, for the most part, tell you what their hopes are and what their fears are for themselves, for their families, and for their community. Um, And that while, um, you know, these really well-paid uh, media consultants, et cetera, <laughs> political consultants will have you focus on wedge issues and the issues that divide us that, and like, and they are designed to sort of, you know, uh, uh, fan the flames uh, uh, that, you know, that are lit in each of us that ultimately talking about bread and butter issues um, is a great way to start. Uh, and the issue that we keep coming back to um, that uh, a politics of love and of power uh, is uh, the one that's going to help us sort of build the new Georgia, power the new Georgia, uh, and move us forward. People love themselves. They love their families. Uh, they love their communities, and they want the best for them. And so having um, important conversations with folks about them. Uh, and then, you know, everything takes time. That We can't, you yeah, can't right. resource us and, and give us money to turn out the Black vote in after Labor Day. Uh, right. Exactly. Uh, and, <laughs> and six is, week, six it, week politics. Exactly. You know? <laughs> that, instead that's of not, not going to work. Instead of politics as a part of your life, because that's what it is. I mean, if you want better schools, if you want uh, clean water, or you want, you know, opportunity for your children. Well, uh, that's this is where we get it. Uh, we we go into the public forum. Uh, and we get together, we hash some things out, and we make some bold proposals. The right. bolder proposals, the better. Uh, I, so, so let me explore that with you a little bit. Uh, uh, John Lewis, you mentioned uh, him, a great uh, member of Congress uh, from uh, 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 Georgia, uh, the Atlanta area. Uh, I, it was my privilege to, to know him a little bit and to tra- travel and do a little politicking with him. It's a lot of fun, uh, <laughs> despite his seriousness uh, uh, like and, uh, and, and his earnestness, uh, his intensity about change. Change has got to come. After all, this is the guy who had his head bashed in at uh, the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma uh, in the 1960s. Uh, so he's been there. <laughs> you know, he, he didn't have to have a credential. <laughs> you know, he doesn't need a voting card as far as I'm concerned. You know? the, he, kids say, the kids like to say that he had receipts. Yeah, that right. John Lewis <laughs> had all his receipts. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So John said uh, in his last message uh, to 
to, mainly to progressives, but to the public at large, uh, was that, uh, that that we have to we have to be daring. We have to get out there. We have to really fight for our democratic values uh, to be implemented, not not honored uh, in, in some holiday, but to be implemented. And to do that, we have to get in good trouble. He said, "Good trouble, necessary trouble." What does that mean to you? Um. You know, as a, a kid who grew up in Metro Atlanta, in Southwest Atlanta, to be specific, uh, John Lewis has been my congressman, was my congressman mm, for a really? very wow. long time. Uh, I've had a lot of time to think about good trouble and necessary trouble and what it's meant for me. Um, and I think that, you know, thinking about his life as a young organizer, uh, for mm. me, good trouble means that in the face of unjust laws, like, He's like, you're a good kid. You're a church-going kid. Uh, I'm an immigrant kid. You definitely don't go to jail, right? You definitely <laughs> don't leave the house and set out to break laws that day. And so um, thinking about in the face of uh, unjust laws, uh, mandates, dictates, uh, norms that, you know, going up against the status quo, challenging institutions, challenging authority will sometimes get you in trouble. But if you're doing it in the interest of like righteous, a righteous cause, uh, uh, in the interest of justice and in the interest of liberty, that you can, you're, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to have to face the consequences of your actions, but make sure that it's good trouble. Make sure that it's necessary trouble, that it's worthy. Um, and so... You know, that has that's what it means to me is like yeah. making uh, challenging the norm, uh, yeah. challenging the status quo in the name of justice. Worthy, worthy is such a, a proper uh, word that you use there, because uh, sometimes uh, we, we progressives get progressives get lost in in fights that are symbolic, uh, that they're not they're not structural. They don't change anything if we win. <laughs> so let's have fights, as you suggest, on uh, uh, issues like uh, gerrymandering. Yeah, we've got to get a better word for that. But nonetheless, gerrymandering, uh, like the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the majority vote uh, in, in the Senate, uh, uh, and, and so much other. Medicare for all, health care for, whether you call it Medicare, I don't care. Health care, everybody should get health care. <laughs> Just that simple. You know, not right. let's get some health care for some other people, but not everybody. <laughs> no, let's and not get everybody. Insurance. Not health insurance. No, health right. Care. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. There's a lot of times we're fighting and arguing about what type of insurance that we need. I exactly. As long as people yep. have access to quality, affordable yeah. care. Yeah, you're sick, you're injured, you got a problem, right. you get help. That's 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 America to me, right there. Well, uh, Deanna's got some more folks uh, want to visit with us. Before we go there, though, I want to point out that uh, that if, if you're liking our conversation uh, here uh, with uh, Insa Ufot, uh, and if you don't, then uh, please go away. <laughs> uh, but uh, but, uh, but if, if you are liking it. You can get a whole lot more of this high tower low down attitude uh, because uh, every week we put out a free, did I say the word free, free email uh, uh, newsletter uh, that goes out and it uh, points out people like NSA who are out there fighting for their communities, fighting for uh, justice, uh, fighting against corporate control uh, of our lives and our media. Uh, and, and, and that the media, I'm sorry, that the media overlooks uh, and sometimes looks down on. Uh, we take a different attitude. We want to highlight people like this and to say, uh, you are one of those people as well. Uh, and we want to uplift those of you who are out there battling. Uh, for what America actually stands for, economic fairness and social justice and equal opportunity uh, for all people. So go to HightowerLowdown.org uh, and sign up. That's all it takes. No money involved. Uh, no no investigation of your past <laughs> is, is required. Uh, uh, just sign up and get our weekly uh, email uh, dealing with issues uh, like this. So Deanna, we have some folks want to say something? Sure do. Um, 
we also i think um the rest of the country who's watching got got a little jealous when we were set you know shouting out the planes because then all of a sudden Uh-oh. everybody's like i'm in florida i'm in massachusetts <laughs> like the, i'm in oregon <laughs> like the coach showed up they're like hey all right we love, we love our coastal people but bernadette has a great question um and she put it puts it very bluntly rural versus urban how did that work out and say, so, do you want to talk a little bit about about yeah. if those are two actually different things? Yeah, they are. But again, I think about love. Uh, rural folks love their families the same way that folks in the city do. Um, mm-hmm. And so that was what our focus was: is like, what are the things that unite us? But not in like the cheesy, corny way that forced unity that doesn't like recognize or acknowledge our humanity. Um, but you know, real so couple things that you should know. We're going to do a little Georgia trivia. Um, mm. <laughs> so one, I think that oftentimes, and let's like unpack it, when people talk about um, rural voters, a lot of times it's code for white conservatives. Um, and that is not the case in Georgia at all. Not right. only are there tons of white progressives uh, living, loving, right. raising their families in rural exactly. states. But uh, we have what is known as Georgia's rural black belt. Um, so imagine a prom sash uh, going across the state of Georgia from the northeast down to the southwest. Uh, that's our black belt. Uh, several counties, most of them majority, um, are most of them rural, um, many of them majority people of color. And so not only do we have white progressives in rural parts of our state, but there are at least 20 counties that are majority African-American and majority people of color that are right. rural. And so. Right. And talk about that. Talk about those uh, poultry workers who are out there from uh, Latinas, Latinx people absolutely. Uh, who are out there as well. Uh, absolutely. It's, a, it's a, it's a dynamic world we're living in absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the stereotypes don't fit. And Asian Americans, you know, I think about, um, uh, you know, Columbus, Georgia, where there's a huge military base and there's also a Kia plant that opened up a couple of years ago. Right. And so we have middle income, middle management, working class folks who are working on the factory line, uh, executives who are Asian American and are diversifying rural parts of the state uh, every single day. And so we truly are living in a multiracial democracy, um, a multiracial, multiethnic, multilingual uh, progressive majority <laughs> uh, in Georgia. And, um, and so anyone who has a serious plan to win statewide uh, in Georgia needs to, you know, have a plan for Atlanta and for rural parts of the state. And again, this isn't your, the barnstorming of yesteryear where you use coded racist language to talk to rural voters and you have a whole different tone when you talk to urban voters that people have the internet where many of us are on Twitter and Instagram. We talk to each other. We talk to our, our country cousins. Uh, and uh, that, you know, coming to people in uh, t- accountable leadership uh, and focusing on issues that matter, uh, I think is super important. And again, acknowledging that we live in a multiracial democracy. Yeah, exactly. And, so, and it's real. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. That, that's it's the real. reality that we're in. And we should wallow in that. We should rejoice in that. And, and well, we, should, we, should, we should bring it all together with us because we're going to be enriched. I, I'm talking as a white guy from a small town in Texas uh, that, uh, that we, I, I, I could not be more happy to be enriched by these other cultures uh, coming here so, so that I don't have to necessarily travel the world. I like, like any opportunity I've had to do that. Uh, yeah. but, but it's right here. In America, and indeed it is uh, America, and and that that to me is, is a politics of meaning, uh, mm-hmm. and a politics, as you put it, that is worthy of us uh, mm-hmm. to to fight for this. That we truly are all in this together. That's not just a corporate slogan right. that the that the CEO of Citibank gets to use. We're all in this together. <laughs> no, uh-huh. we're not. He's he's not. He's not in our community. Sure. He lives in, in a mansion in New York City, you know. So right. uh, so, so so going to, to just regular folks uh, like you do and your organization does. And and that seems to me uh, maybe a little bit you could talk about uh, 
of uh, Georgia has has made a big breakthrough in, in the last year. Again, uh, it, it was a long time coming. I mean, you, you worked on it for for a decade and more, uh, deliberately, uh, door to door. Uh, what, what about other communities? I mean, we're struggling with it here in Texas. Uh, people in Iowa and Wisconsin are struggling with it, uh, much less uh, all through the South, of course, and uh, elsewhere. Uh, wh- what do you say to people? How, how, how can your example, maybe not a model exactly, but your example, uh, move other people in this direction? Sure. Um, I'm I'm actually quite excited about uh, the future of our politics again. I know that we have a hard road ahead of us, but looking people in the eye, having high quality face-to-face conversations when possible about things that matter um, is what's going to move the needle for us. I think the work of, you know, connecting the votes the power of your vote to the changes that people want to see, um, I think is super important. And those are some of the lessons that I hope that people learn. Um, I hope that people learn and understand that, um, you know, the way that we train our organizers is that they have twice as many ears as they do mouths. And so it's really, really very good. Very good. Listen, right? At your grandmother's school teaching right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, culture eats strategy for lunch every day. And so yeah. think about, you know, you come into the town and recognize that the town council is also the like everyone's favorite pastor. Um but like the president of the town council is everyone's favorite pastor. And so um, you know, like you might want to figure out like how to swing by Wednesday night Bible study um, as a way of meeting people. Um, right. You know, you come to certain places in Georgia and it's Friday night football, uh, right? And so we're going to be registering voters and we want to talk to young people and we want to figure out what's going on in the town. We come into the Friday night football game, right? Uh, so in some communities, right? It's, it's the, it's the Friday fish fry, uh, yeah. right? And so, Understanding culture, understanding that, um, you know, we, um, we, what well, they say, you, you make the road by walking. Uh, so we're building mm-hmm. the Georgia that we want to live in by like being honest with each other, building relationships, building community, talking about the fact that we need each other, that we're in, interconnected, um, recognizing that we aren't saviors. We aren't the, like, there isn't a Calvary that's going to come. <laughs> right. Over the right. That we are the ones that we can we're it. For. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think those are all lessons so strong um, yeah so. so strong and uh and and we got we, we we have to i think from the grassroots say emphatically uh in the face of uh even rudely uh to biden and, and biden's uh, crew uh which, which is disappointingly centrist uh and an old line and corporate oriented there's some exceptions to that that are important but nonetheless, generally, that's the truth of what of the kind of administration he has created. But we've got to say to him that just going back to pre-Trump is not an advance. Uh, that puts us back at square one. An advance is what people want. People want health care. People want good jobs, secure jobs at good wages. Uh, pe- people want clean water and clean air. I mean, just uh, right on down the line. And and as you're indicating, you get that by making that fight at a local level. We had just last week uh, a woman on our uh, on our uh, uh, podcast here on our uh, uh, Facebook Live uh, program, uh, Sharon Levine uh, out of uh, uh, St. James Parish, Louisiana, fighting. Uh, this gigantic corporation out of Taiwan called Formosa Plastics uh, that wants to add pollution uh, to wants to double the pollution in this community that is called Cancer Alley, uh, and she's been battling. Uh, but she is a school teacher, uh, and she's 69 years old, and and said we can't have this other this additional factory uh, come in here. We've got to do something. And so she stood up and she had a meeting in her garage <laughs> with 20 people and 20 people made the change that is denying the permit 
to Formosa Plastics to come in and double the pollution on those people. That is change. That is real change. 100%. I love it. I think that, um, you know, growing up in Atlanta, obviously we are raised on a steady diet of King quotes um, and the sort of yeah. legacy of King's organizing. And, you know, the thing I love is that the, the original name, the actual name of what we know is the I Have a Dream speech is actual, it's titled Normalcy Never Again. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of i didn't the, know I, that it, it that is, is really good it's okay. archived it's on right. the top it's <laughs> normalcy not the never again yeah. normalcy never yeah. again is the name we, of we've it. we've experienced normalcy <laughs> <laughs> well but the idea is that we this what are we going back to that we need right. to move forward that again exactly. we make the road by walking what are we fighting for what is the world that we want to live in what are the communities that we mm-hmm. want to what do we want it to look like? Like we get to decide um, and no one's going to make that decision for us. Uh, and, uh, you know, that is the, I think the key feature of our organizing. And those are the conversations that we need to keep having. I love this story. School teacher, 69. I mean, on the one hand, yeah. I want her to know rest. I want her <laughs> to know retirement. I want her to know, you know, job well done. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I love that she's still in the fight. Right, that, that's oh, showing lead. leading the fight. She's there. Well, uh, this is Insa Ufot. She is the uh, CEO of the Georgia Voter uh, Project and a great uh, grassroots leader and an example of uh, of something that I uh, le- learned of uh, when when I first moved here to to Austin. Uh, in the late 1970s, uh, there was a moving company here uh, that uh, wasn't one of these big chains or anything. It was just a local moving company, two big guys with a truck, you know. And uh, and they had a slogan. They had an attitude. And they said, if we can get it loose, we can move it. <laughs> That's what we're talking about <laughs> right here. Mm-hmm. Get it loose at a grassroots level, and the people will move it. For themselves. Thank right. you, Inse, for being with us again. It is a joy. We're going to have you back again and again because you're a spirit. Oh, thank you. This was lovely. Cheers, friend. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. Thanks so much. Stay in the fight. That's the important thing. <laughs>